Hi, in this video we will talk about EVM, what happens when you add ZK to an EVM and whether ZK EVM is something to look out for on the next bull cycle, because, uh, spoiler alert, it just might be. So let's start with what it, EVM is. EVM is like a decentralized huge program that runs on multiple computers. It allows for Ethereum to be different from Bitcoin because Ethereum with this EVM can execute smart contracts. Smart contracts or multiple smart contracts can compile a decentralized application. So that's basically a computer program um, developed by developers for you to do something with on blockchain apart from just using currency. So smart contracts, when you execute them, they do require a state transition. State transition means like a change in balances that happened. So let's say one address decided to send some tokens to another address. And this address is now has a lower balance than it used to, and this address has now a higher balance than it used to. So change in balance has happened and state transition was triggered because smart contracts um, executed some action. So these state transitions are the important part of the EVM, and you can call the EVM is like a state machine. And when you add zero knowledge to that and you get a ZK EVM, that means that you also have zero knowledge proofs that the parts of the process happened correctly. So you basically can offload a bunch of computational costs of blockchain and then execute them off chain and just generate zero knowledge proofs that this were all correct and publish them on chain. And zero knowledge proofs are much smaller and require much less like computational resource to validate than the full computational power to generate each transaction. So when you add a ZK EVM on top of Ethereum as a layer two, that means that you can now take a thousand transactions, execute them off chain, generate a bunch of zero knowledge proofs that they're all valid and correct, and kind of lump them all together into one, generate a zero knowledge proof that they are all correct, and publish just one transaction with this proof on the main chain of Ethereum. So you would pay the gas fee only once, and you would execute all the transactions very fast because the computation would happen off chain, but it would still inherit the validity or sorry, the security of Ethereum main chain itself because the proof is published on Ethereum. So this is like a very, very high level overview of how ZK rollups work. And basically there are two types of them, ZK EVMs that use these types of proofs and they're also optimistic rollups that I am not going to talk about in this video, but they are the dominant position right now on uh, the market that is Arbitrum and Optimism. And um, they are easier to develop on, but they are a bit less secure than ZK EVM type rollups because they do not have this zero knowledge proofs of the transactions and of the correct execution of state transitions. And uh, basically, they rely on the fact that there is at least one honest validator on the network at all times. And ZK EVMs don't have this assumption. They just have proofs and pure math that this is all correct. An important thing to understand here is that EVM has a set of opcodes. These opcodes are pieces of code that smart contracts or decentralized applications use to interact with the EVM itself. So they can be stored this address in your working memory. And EVM has a specific set of opcodes for itself and ZK EVMs have another set of opcodes for themselves. That means that smart contracts that are developed for the EVM on for Ethereum main chain are not necessarily going to be able to run on all ZK EVMs because ZK EVMs are not going to understand what to do because that code has instructions for the EVM, not ZK EVM. And that was the case up until recently. Uh, however, we are now having a new set of emerging applications of ZK EVMs that are EVM equivalent. That means that they are using the same opcodes as EVM does, but they are managing to execute it on a ZK EVM. So how it works is uh, the process of very smart people doing something very smart that I don't understand. This is actually a big deal and it is a big breakthrough for the zero knowledge technology. And um, this is probably going to remove the bottleneck that they have been facing for the developers adoption. So since this breakthrough happened like 10 months ago, a couple of old players started reviving and trying to develop a ZK EVM that is EVM equivalent, and a couple of new players appeared. So let's see what these are. In particular, I'm going to talk about ZK Sync with their version 2 or ZK Sync era, 
polygons, ZK AVM, and the two new kids on the block, scroll and taiko. Let's start with the biggest one and polygon. Polygon is the oldest one, the biggest one in funding, and just in the user base as well. It used to be a sidechain on Ethereum, but now it is transitioning into being a ZK EVM. It has $450 million invested into the company itself, and the investors include Sequoia Capital and Dragonfly Capital. And uh, when I would say the date when they started developing the ZK EVM type thing, is uh, when they acquired Hermes in 2022. Hermes was a zero knowledge also focused uh, zero knowledge focused company as well. Polygon acquired it, and I guess they rebranded it to Polygon Hermes, and then um, it became Polygon ZK EVM. So this is going to be almost EVM equivalent type ZK EVM. However, they are saying that a tiny modification might be needed for certain applications, but they do not really specify, or at least I wasn't smart enough to understand what they specified. Um, they are claiming to be about 2,000 transactions per second. And I assume most type ones or EVM equivalent type rollups are going to be around this speed. So up to 2,000 transactions per second. And at the moment, it is in the beta. Let's now go to the second biggest one, that is ZK Sync Era, or the ZK Sync version 2. And they're in name quite some time ago, actually. ZK Sync appeared in 2019 as a company from, uh, uh, from the company of Matter Labs. However, they started developing the version 2, and let's say we can see when the testnet appeared. It was in late December of 2021. So if the testnet would by that time, they probably have been in development for even longer. So I don't really know, I haven't found that on the internet. But anyways, they are slightly different from the ZK VMs that Polygon, Scroll and Taiko offer because it is more EVM compatible than EVM equivalent. That means the developers would have to modify more code than for the three other ones. So they are making a trade-off in this regard because they have a compiler added to their architecture. So the developers develop code for Ethereum and then this code gets compiled into another language and then that thing gets compiled to be executed by the ZK Sync EVM. So this is slightly different from the other ones, as I said, slightly less convenient for developers. However, the TPS in this regard is a thousand K as what they promised or over a thousand K transactions per second, which is, well, <laughs> I'm interested to see, but every time people say something over like 5K or 12K transactions per second, to me, it just sounds arbitrary in that sense because you cannot really check it. We are not going to have that number of transactions per second on any chain for quite some time. At least that's what I think. And maybe I am so wrong and you can disprove me very much in the comments. I will be glad to talk about it. But I really don't think we need more than 10k in the near future. And if we do, well, sorry, I, I, I'm, I will be really glad if I'm wrong. But it really doesn't seem to be this way. ZK Sync is developed by Matter Labs and Matter Labs has had over $258 million in funding over multiple funding rounds that included investments from A16Z and Dragonfly Capital, just like Polygon. And um, it is right now the ZK Sync era on its uh, mainnet stage. However, it's uh, kind of a pre-inscription. I don't know how to say it in other words, but basically you had to pre-register if you wanted to deploy on it. And soon, I do not know how soon because they are not specifying, they are going to go full proper mainnet when you will be able to develop your application if you want to on it openly without any registration needed. And now let's get to the new rekid on a blog that is Scroll and Taiko. Scroll, stri st sorry. Scroll started in 2021 and Taiko started in 2022. So they are very, very new, both of them. And Scroll aims to go on mainnet in Q2. So this year in Q2, basically it started already, second quarter. And let's see how it's going, whether it's going to be on the roadmap and on track on that or not. And Taiko aims to launch in the early so quarter one, let's say, of 2024. Scroll has already announced an and funding round, sorry, a funding round that included investments from Polychain and uh, Chikoi Capital, and it is uh, aiming to be completely EVM equivalent. At least that's what they are trying to achieve. So they are adjusting every possible 
thing, every possible opcode that you have in Ethereum to be able to run on their type of ZK EVM. Taiko also aims to be a super EVM equivalent type of ZK EVM, and uh, we'll see how it goes because both of these are aiming to be this way, and we never know how it is actually going to turn out because it is still a new technology in development, and um, Polygon, uh, that is the closest thing to them at the moment, still has to have some modifications to um, the developer's code for running those applications on the ZKVM. So it's too early to say, to be honest. And um, the TPS is not announced for either Tyco or Scroll, at least I haven't found. Uh, one guy said on Twitter that it's about 1,000 to 2,000 TPS for Scroll. And that sounds reasonable to me because that's what Polygon announced and um, they are all more or less similar in their architecture. So I would expect around 2,000 transactions per second for both Tyco and Scroll as well as for Polygon. I haven't found any information about the funding of the Tyco Labs. However, if you have something, please drop a link in the comments. Uh, very much appreciated. And um, other than that, that's all I have for you about Tyco. I have a video for Scroll, I have a video about Tyco, and um, I have a video about Starkware as well, which is kind of on the same scenery, on the same landscape. If you'd like to watch it, I will leave links in the description and in the first pinned comment. And uh, let's now go and have a bottom line to sum everything up, to have like everything correctly in our brains. So Ethereum is hardly scalable, it's a layer one. You need layer two to scale it and to increase its throughput and decrease gas fees. Many different types of layer twos exist that try to solve this issue. And TKVM seem to be a very promising solution to that. They used to be very inconvenient for the developers to run their applications on. And they are very stratified as well. And they were just, yeah, in general, not very user-friendly. And now we had a bunch of developments in the zero-knowledge sphere that allowed for ZKVMs to be more usable right now. And a bunch of projects, some old ones are reviving and some new ones are appearing, that are introducing the Type 1 or Type 2 ZK EVMs, which are almost EVM equivalent, or much more EVM equivalent than they used to be. So these types of ZKVMs do not require much code modifications for the developers to run their dApps or smart contracts on those layer twos, which is a good thing and removes the bottleneck for the scalability of those types of layer twos because developers can just freely deploy a bunch of applications on many of them, to be honest, and they don't have to just pick and try to specify in just one. And uh, this just might be a very bullish and good sign for the ZKVM type rollups. And this might be the last drop that helps them to achieve a proper position against optimistic rollups such as Arbitrum and Optimism. That's all I have for you about this one. Check the description for many useful links and see you in the next one.